What's up Guardians, Profane here, thanks for checking out the video. Today we are taking a look at an amazing and extremely dominating solar build for Warlocks during Season 19. A build that is absolutely perfect at mowing through the toughest waves of adds or absolutely demolishing champions and bosses at any level. Today's build features one of the most unique Solar Warlock exotics the Sun Bracers, an exotic gauntlet that has some magnificent synergy with the new Solar 3.0 class trees. This exotic comes with the intrinsic perk called Helium Spirals, a beautifully designed perk that gives your solar grenades a significant boost in firepower, as it grants your solar grenades the intrinsic ability of Fastball which provides further throwing distance of your grenades, but more importantly, it provides your solar grenades with an increase in duration of four additional seconds, going from four seconds to eight seconds, which can contribute to some massive damage to your enemies. And even better than that, Sunbracers gives you a very unique combination that's triggered after defeating an enemy with your charged melee. After this has been achieved, you'll receive a buff called Sunbracers Ready, which will last for five seconds. And during that five second window, you'll be able to spam those solar grenades as fast as you can, as you'll have unlimited recharge during this five second window, which will equate out to be between five and six total solar grenades sitting out on the battlefield for double their normal duration. This gives Solar Warlocks an amazing opportunity to dish out huge amounts of DPS or flat out evaporate anything that's standing in your way. And once this amazing exotic gets paired up to some key components provided by our Solar 3.0 aspects and fragments, as well as some select choices in armor mods, you'll be flat out unstoppable as you annihilate any and everything with this perfect Solar Warlock build. Now before we dive in deeper into today's build, if you do end up enjoying the video and finding it helpful, then please be sure to help support the channel below by smashing that like button along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated and both really do help support the channel. And before you leave the video today, be sure to sound off in the comments below about your thoughts on the Sunbracers during Season 19. The Sunbracers are an exceptionally top tier exotic for Warlocks, but to master their full potential, you'll need to adjust your playstyle just a bit, especially in order to efficiently use them while completing in-game content. And I say this because we are pairing the Sunbracers up with Heat Rises. This solar aspect provides you with the ability to fire weapons, use your charged melee, and even throw grenades while gliding. Kills while Heat Rises is active grants melee energy, with 20% energy returning off of low tier enemy kills, with 25% for medium tier kills, and 50% for champions, mini bosses, guardians, and other high tier enemies. The biggest misconception about this aspect is that it doesn't require you to stay suspended in the air the entire time to reap the benefits of getting melee energy back. Even bunny hopping provides you with enough lift off of the ground to provide you with the returned grenade energy which can play a significant role in your survivability in in-game content, as it can become extremely risky to hang out in the air. Once activating Heat Rises, you'll be granted a 15 second buff, along with a burst of curing energy that heals you and allies within 9 meters. During this 15 seconds, you'll have a significant increase in your in-air controls, as well as a bonus to your airborne efficiency for any weapon by an additional 70 points. While Heat Rises is active, any kill 
whether from a weapon or ability, will extend the duration of heat rises, with 5 seconds being added for low tier enemies, 10 seconds for medium tier enemies, and 15 seconds for high tier enemies. When pairing this up with the Sun Bracers, you'll find a great deal of success by burning a grenade to activate heat rises before any engagement. Defeat an enemy with your charged melee, which really becomes dealer's choice. I prefer Celestial Fire, but some Guardians are extremely fond of the snap. Maybe it's the animation? I don't know. Sound off in the comments which melee is your preferred choice. Once you have defeated an enemy, you'll now have 5 seconds of spammable solar nukes that can be instantly re-triggered with another charged melee attack, which you'll be able to make an abundance of if you can maintain at least a few bunny hops off the ground as you project down these hot balls of lava. And I do mean lava, because we are also using the solar aspect called Touch of Flame, which is going to give our solar grenades an additional increase in their duration, but also will start to emit blobs of lava around its perimeter, which will have the ability of scorching and igniting enemies on their own. And since we're using Heat Rises, I also really like to use Phoenix Dive for a few different reasons. First off, it's a great way to get out of the air in a pinch and can be utilized to provide you and your allies with instant bursts of healing energy while in combat. And when performed while Heat Rises is active, you'll even have the ability of scorching enemies as you land, which is not only an amazing animation, but a powerful ability. Which brings me to our choice in Solar Fragments. Our main goal here is to amplify the synergy between our melee and grenade energy. Since we'll be using these more than anything else, we need to ensure that they're ready at all times. And that starts us off with Ember of Blistering. Defeating targets with solar ignitions grants 20% grenade energy, something that we'll easily be able to reap the benefits of with all the grenades that we'll be throwing. By using Ember of Searing, when we defeat Scorched enemies, we'll get between 8% melee energy back for low tier enemies and upwards of 28% for high tier enemies. And since we're also using Ember of Char, which spreads Scorch from Solar Ignitions, we'll be able to create a ton of Ignitions and Scorch a hell of a lot of enemies. By using Ember of Torches, those powered melee attacks will grant you and your allies Radiance by providing Solar Weapons with a boost in damage by 25%, which will play a key role in the armor mods that we're going to go with for this build. And with that, I fully understand that many Guardians may find themselves missing out on certain armor mods or weapons. So because of that, we'll be covering several different mod variations that you can utilize to maximize this build's efficiency. And since our grenade and melee energy regeneration is our main focus, we need to ensure that armor stats are being focused as heavily towards strength and discipline as possible. But bear in mind that recovery is what determines not only your health regeneration, but your class ability as well. And with that being said, an amazing mod to use to bump up your strength will be Radiant Light. An arc mod that provides you with an additional 20 points of strength when you have another arc mod either in the second or third slot of the same armor piece, or a fourth slot armor mod in another armor piece. Radiant Light will also grant Charged with Light, both to you and your allies when casting your super. Using Radiant Light with an Arc Helmet will give you the added benefit of using the Hands On mod, which will provide you with super energy after defeating enemies with your melee. Alternatively, a Solar Helmet will allow for the use of Ashes to Ashes, which will grant super energy 
after defeating enemies with your grenade. Either one is a great choice with this build. Since both our charged melee and grenade provides us with the ability to defeat enemies by explosions, using the exploding wellmaker mod will be one of the strongest mod combinations with this build, which will create a solar well after rapidly defeating multiple enemies with explosive damage. This will also open up the spectrum of combining this build with the Wither Horde and other grenade launchers, as their explosions will count under Explosive Wellmaker, which now gives us the ability to combine this up with some very interesting mods. Picking up a Solar Well will provide ability energy, and by combining that with the Solar mod called Well of Ordnance, you'll receive an additional 10% grenade energy with upwards of 19% for the use of four of these mods every time a well is collected, which also makes the use of Bountiful Wells just as crucial. Another solar mod that will create two wells instead of one whenever a well is created through Explosive Wellmaker. But if you're missing out on Explosive Wellmaker, Elemental Ordnance or Armaments will both be amazing alternate mods to use in order to create wells by defeating enemies with either your grenade or your solar weapons. And the Well of Life mod will make for an amazing mod to add with this build as it provides superior survivability with 11 seconds of health recovery each and every time a well is picked up. And with the abundance of wells that you'll be creating, utilizing Font of Might will make for another great choice in mods with this build as you'll receive an additional 25% damage for solar weapons, which will stack on top of the bonus that you'll get while Radiant. The last fourth slot mod that we'll talk about today is one that many newer Guardians will likely not have yet, but is the Firepower mod, a solar mod that refunds 15% grenade energy when using your grenade while charged with light. A great mod but one that does require some extra effort. Using Firepower would also mean that you would have to combine this with another mod like Taking Charge, Elemental Charge, or one of the several other mods to become charged with light. Alternatively, I really like the use of Grenade Kickstart, a stasis mod that provides 15% grenade energy when your grenade energy is completely expunged. And just as effective is Melee Kickstart, which provides 15% melee energy when it is empty. Momentum Transfer will make for another great Solar Gloves mod to use, as it will grant 20% melee energy after dealing damage with a grenade. And to get even more grenade energy back, you can use the Solar Class Item mod called Bomber, which returns 25% grenade energy whenever using your Phoenix Dive near an enemy. And if you throw on Harmonic Siphon onto any helmet, your solar weapons will start creating orbs on rapid kills, which you can then use along with the solar leg mods called Innervation and Recuperation to get grenade energy as well as health back whenever picking up an orb. And when it comes to weapons, that will really synergize well with this build, the use of legendary weapons with Incandescent work exceptionally well as they help add the Scorch and Ignitions that you're already creating with your Solar Grenades. So weapons like the Callus Mini Tool, the BXR Battler, the Staccato, or even the Cataclysmic are all very strong and as are exotics like the Dead Messenger Grenade Launcher which can swap between elemental burns, the Parasite Heavy Grenade Launcher even, which can put out some exceptionally high single shot DPS, and weapons that come with Osmosis, Demolitionist, or Wellspring will all provide superior synergy with this Sunbracer's build. With Grenade Launchers getting the nod at Unstoppable Rounds this season, the combination of Unstoppable Grenade Launchers 
and weakened clear is exceptionally powerful when paired up with any of these grenade launchers, but none more so than the Wither Horde as it reloads your stowed weapons and weakens enemies after being hit by any grenade launcher. Another top tier mod from the seasonal artifact is Solo Operative, an immensely powerful class item mod that provides an additional 15% damage to all weapons and abilities and is absolutely perfect for solo guardians. But when you find yourself in a team activity, weakened clear will be extremely beneficial. And in the case of in-game content, the Lucent Finisher mod will be great at creating heavy ammo for you and allies after finishing Champions and Lucent Hive. And with that, we've covered all the mods, weapons, and exciting combinations that come together to create this extraordinary, powerful solar build featuring the Sunbracer exotic gauntlets. I'd love to hear your thoughts on today's Solar Warlock build, any alternative mods, weapons, and any other details that you'd like to share with your fellow Guardians about your experience with the Sunbracers. Be sure to check the description below for the Destiny Item Manager link for today's build so that you can easily match it up for yourself. And before you leave today's video, if you ended up enjoying and finding the video helpful, then please be sure to hit that like button below along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated and both really do help support the channel. If you're a new light guardian just starting your journey or a battle hardened veteran looking for a new home, then be sure to check out the discord link in the description below and join one of the greatest communities in all of Destiny. And until next time guardians, this has been Profane wishing you all some happy hunting.